Welcome back, folks, to another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. Now, before we jump to this one, I just want to thank you. If you are new here for coming along, please give us a like and subscribe. And if you are coming back, you know I love you. Really, really appreciate you. It's how we grow here. So thank you so much. If you haven't seen our last episode with the Galactic Oz, the number one soccer podcast in this country, those boys were fucking wild, Braden. We left like, and Braden goes, what did you say? Yeah, it was like, felt like a jackhammer was in here for about an hour. Yeah, it was relentless and some pretty uh, contentious topics that they spoke through uh, pretty bluntly. So please go back and check that. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, I think I'm a beautiful human, but I'm struggling to look in the eyes of this man. And I, I think this man will tell you that he's beautiful as well. <laughs> he's got no shortage of confidence. <laughs> but Tommy Bolsh, known as Prime Chain, the man, the myth, the legend, mate. Welcome to the platform. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I've been watching your potty for a while now. I've seen a few apps. So yeah, it's a, it's a privilege to be on, mate. Mate, you are a fucking, you are like a, a Literally a legend in this space. You, you are. You're, I told. I spoke to Pizza Louis gone. from uh, Nine to Five, who's obviously your roommate. And mm-hmm. he said, "Mate, he's like a mythical creature. Like sometimes I don't think you're human with <laughs> some of the stuff you're doing. But <laughs> mate, it's pretty pretty special what you are doing. Like Thanks. most recently as well. Like some of the stuff that blows me away is like." the amount of kids that come up to you in mm. like local parks or just places and the autographs you're signing. Like, is that a bit surreal for you at times? It, it's crazy for me though. Cause I like, I'm a local football, like local footy player. Yeah, so, like, that's so it's the like, thing. it's like, bro, like sometimes when we go out and, and people, I think it's cause we're a little bit more accessible and people feel like they know us a little bit more. So they're a lot more comfortable coming and asking for a photo than what they would if they went out and saw like an AFL player. Now, so you've made the move down to Melbourne. Very recently, Very uh, like as in a couple the, of days. Yeah, a couple yeah. of days. So I literally drove from bloody Noosa to Melbourne, and I, I dreaded it, man. Uh, have you ever done that drive? I've done. Up, I've like, done to done New those, South Wales, like yeah, near sort of Byron. Ten hours, but yeah, ten. Yeah, would even be, a bit more. Byron, fifteen. Yeah, yeah, probably. probably yeah, probably that. Yep. So, but yeah. I did a stopover. But it's mate, it's boring as fuck, oh, bro. I I dreaded it so much. Uh, but I actually, it sounds a little bit crazy, but I did a bit of soul searching, bro. It was actually really <laughs> did good. You know, what did you find? Tell me, what did you find? A lot, a lot about myself. <laughs> you uh, learned to like yourself yeah, or no, hate yourself? Uh, <laughs> mate, I love it. <laughs> was it just nah, you in the car? It, uh, just me in the car, yeah. Oh, I, wow. I, I actually had someone that said, oh, fly to Sydney and do the second half with you. And I, I said, yep, let's do it. That'll be sweet. But then um, I had to pack everything, obviously, into the car. I didn't have that much room. So I was like, don't stress, man. Like, yeah, I'll just yeah. do it by myself. And it was really good. I listened to a lot, a lot of Triple J. Shout out. Uh, yeah. I'd never used to really like Triple J. And now yeah. I've got like a whole playlist of Triple J songs. No so, way, dude. Um, didn't go like obviously on your phone that much. So it was just like a little bit of a switch off for a couple of days. Got a lot of, uh, I'm always thinking as well. Like I'm always creating in my mind. I'm like this one I do, what I want to do with content. This one I want to do with business. Like yeah. let's make this business. Like let's keep yeah. pushing when we get down there. So the ideas are just flowing. Absolutely. What's the driver for you coming to Melbourne and now? Like, what was it that um, felt right? Everyone's asked me that question. And for me, it's, it's a simple one. It's, it's business and, um, and content creation, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's really difficult in Noosa. I've got a footy team and, and, and all my mates there, a lot of them are tradies. A lot of them are working nine to five sort of, thi- uh, sort of thing. So to, to live in a content creation house with some other fellas that are going to help me can hold a phone for me when I need it. Or like we can bounce ideas off each other and all that sort of stuff. It's like, it, it's just key for me. Well, so that's, choice, that's what right. I want. Yeah. I'm surprised how you, I mean, you obviously had a really great platform and foundation to build off, but mm. the amount of like, leverage and connections you were making up in Noosa, which is like out of the epicenter of yeah. AFL in, in a sense, yeah. was remarkable. I can't imagine what you're going to do here. Yeah. that I, I think it was funny because I was saying, saying to some people, you know, in Noosa, I was like, you know, I'm going to move down to Melbourne and it's going to be great. And I, and I can see, I've got a vision of what it's going to look like. And I know it's going to be, you know, if I work really hard on it, I know it's going to be successful. But a lot of people to me were like, oh, like, I don't know if it's going to work. I'm like, you guys don't have the same kind of like vision and drive that I have. And I, and I know that it's going to work because I know that I have a lot of, um, you know, athletes down here that I'm going to be training with and, and working very closely with. And the opportunity is like doing this, like, yeah. you know, we don't have the opportunity that no much way. in Noosa. So moving down here, I think is just a massive uh, advantage and step in the right direction for me. Awesome, bro. Now, I actually just realized I forgot to plug this. I'm wearing a Rolling Stones top because I'm with a Rolling Stone as well. <laughs> I thought I'd take the absolute Michael out of him. <laughs> We've just met and that's what I thought I'd do. But um, did you watch the AFL? I just want to go into the, yes. the season gone. What was yes. your thoughts on the uh, GF? Bit well, of a whitewash, but- Hey, my, my old man's a cat supporter, so ah, I was really? stoked. I was really happy for him. I'm an Essendon man. Who are you? you St. Kilda. You're a St. Kilda uh, man. 56 drought. 56 right. year drought. That's all right. We, yeah, we won't talk about it. <laughs> no. um, <laughs> yes. Sorry for bringing it up, Sorry. bro. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, bro? 
that we just met. <laughs> so bring it up, man. Yeah, nah, it hurts. It's um for me, it's yeah, Essendon. Uh, they're on the right track. They'll be all right. Um, but yeah, my, my old man's a cat supporter, so I was really stoked for him. I, I was really happy. They were the best team all year. What do you reckon? Yeah, I thought I thought they should have won from the get go, mm. but I just thought fuck when you know when the team it's has a like time, such right? a perfect season that like you just think like Brisbane have had a few perfect seasons and yeah. then they lose in first final or whatever. Right. right. Um, and I thought Collingwood actually, if they had have beaten Geelong, mm. if they had got past Sydney too, I thought they they were going to win. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to interrupt you, but yeah, Collingwood, I yeah. wanted them to be in the grand yeah, final. I, I knew it would have be been there. a game because they are so much more, they were going to be so much more competitive than Sydney, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I mean, Sydney played the, in the prelim, Sydney played like the lights out. They played their best yeah. footy for that first yeah. half. And like that, you couldn't play any better. That was their grand final, right? Yeah, they, correct. And that was... The Cats had like an easy prelim. They had a pretty easy run, really. Like Correct. they had a week off, then they had the prelim, and that was just a walk over of the lines, and then straight through. So. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see now with Soa going whether the Cats can back up. They've already made some what's, pretty good trades. Yeah, what's your thoughts next year? Who's going to uh, win? I, I really like. So I've got chip. the Pies hat on because obviously we have mutual friends yes. that play for them. But yes, we love the I've pies. got the Pies hat on. I really like to to see them up there. Okay. Um, I don't really know. I, th- I don't think Geelong's going to be up there again. I think they're going to slide. You reckon? I think Carlton will really improve. I think that's yeah, going to burn. It's revenge season. Revenge, for yeah, yep. because they were fucking pretty good yeah, for the revenge. whole year. I mean, you know footy much better than me. And uh, your actual content, you can tell you've got a beautiful shoe. You're a natural footy player, which I want to go into a bit further. Yeah. But just from your brain perspective and the, the mm-hmm. way you watch the game, who do you love to watch? Like, who's your type of player that would, you would sort of pay to go watch in the AFL? Great question. Um, there's a lot of players, I think. That are, that are really interesting. I think the, the return of the big forwards is really interesting. So the return of someone like a Charlie Kerno who had yeah. a fantastic year this year, um, just an exciting footballer. And then you've got all these other players like that are real highlight players, which I love to watch. Mitch Giordiardi, Giordiardi shout yeah. out him, one of my athletes. Is he so we love him. Yep. Yeah. Port, um, shout out to him. Someone like Shy Bolton. You yeah, know, he's I a, love watching him just, play. Just these highlight machines, bro. And like, uh, I Actually, love Actually, Richmond's them. a good one, just as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. They just got Taranto and um, Hopper, See, was it? They'll be back. And if, and if du- Dusty's staying now, so if if Dusty can have a really strong year, not get injured, because maybe he was window. injured a lot this yeah, year. Yeah, they're so, still in a window, I reckon. Yeah, I agree. And they've got such a good coach. They've got really good facilities. So yeah. I can see the, I see the Tigers being back up there. Now, with the, also with your content brain, because I think you'll appreciate like people like Mitch Robinson who do like yeah, Rob vlogs it, and all that it, sort of really stuff. Would do you think it would be great to see more AFL players tapping into that space, like doing more of that with their platform? Yeah, like I think that that um, I think that that's. Uh, uh, a result of my content doing really well because no one else really does it right. Mm. So uh, Rob Vlogs d- does a really good job. And I think that for me, when I was growing up, it wasn't very accessible to see what an AFL player was doing, what they were yeah. training, what they were eating, that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So for me growing up as an AFL, you know, young footy player, I was like, I want to do what they're doing so I can look like them and play like them. Yeah. And I think that that was always a little bit of a secretive kind of thing. So I guess what I'm trying to bring is a little bit more openness with that and like right. make sure that people can kind of figure out what people are eating, what they're doing, what these AFL players are, you know, how, how they live their lives so they can kind of replicate it and get to the same level. Correct. And shout out um, Ball Magnets for that as well because yes. they were actually – like you've done some some stuff with Fantastic. them as well, which love is them. fucking awesome. Mm, love them. They're absolute legends. Cripper, obviously, Brownlow medalist this year. They've got three Brownlow medalists, Neil, um, Cripper and, and Titch now at the top. So Now, word confidence is something I'll use around this man because I picked him up before and he, he said he just went on a run and it was fucking pissing down. He's like, man, baby, I do. Oh, we all right, man. We it's hey, baby, it's we raining. Hey, I'll, be, I'll be good. But there was something when I spoke to um Louis Phillips about from 9 to 5 Fitness. I was mm. like, man, what, what, like, give me some, you know, some dough on, on uh, Prime Train. He's like, man, confidence. Yeah. He's like, something he just generates and oozes. And I want to kind of get, like, for you where that's come from mm. and I guess how, because it's definitely definitely not a facade with you it's like it's just natural yeah but also what are you attested to it's a really good question I think the the first like whenever I you know you know I'm the same as everyone I I have confidence sometimes and then other times I don't feel great about myself I think Mm -hmm. we all go we all fluctuate and that's normal like I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm confident all the time because you know sometimes sometimes I am that's what a lot of people see but you know we fluctuate we all do so um and when I'm when I know that I'm a little bit down I know I've become an expert in what I need to do to change that, right? So, um, you know, I'm sleeping my eight hours. I'm, I'm going, mm. like I said before, I'm going for a run, training. It makes me feel so much better. It gets the freaking endorphins like I'm working and then eating really good nutrition, that sort of stuff. And something that I do every single day, um, I've got like a little journal that I write down 
my goals in every day and then um two really? po- yeah two positive affirmations about myself so have you my, done them today yep what would they but what were they today is if you don't mind sharing i <laughs> just i'm gorgeous uh, one of my po- <laughs> <laughs> no. well, the thing is like you can like you can be as arrogant as you want because it's it's, it's yours. as confident as you it's want yours. because it's just your book yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah. It's, but, but like um, you know, it could be anything from, you know, like I'm really, I'm, I love my dog or it could be like, right. you know, I love the way that I look or that I love the pers- people that I live with, yeah. or it could be, um, you know, I love the weather or I'm, lu- I'm, I'm lucky to have a roof over my head. Like yeah. it could be anything Basic that just things. to put just puts you back into like, how lucky am I today kind right. of thing. Cause a lot of people get like, I want more, more, more. And it's like, hold on, just take a step back and be like, look what I have. Yeah. You know, I'm so lucky for what I have kind of thing. So I guess that's what I really, um, am really controlled with and and I think that that really aids my confidence every and any time that I feel a little bit like down I'll go back to those affirmations and be like you know I'm good I'm sweet I'm yeah. fine we are eh? yeah we are yeah, eh? we are, yeah. We are. <laughs> Yeah, well, so no, I'll go back to that. This also ties into a little bit um, around your business stuff mm-hmm. as well. But I also think like when you're super fit and you're working out a lot in whatever way that's possible mm-hmm. for, for anyone, that you gain a confidence and an edge about yourself and you, yep. whatever space you're in, you, you tend to grow up and, and get up a bit. Do you find that as well with obviously yeah. your clients, but your own self when you're working out and you're super fit? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that everybody uh, or, you know, a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh, I'm feeling a little bit down or I'm a little bit a little bit depressed today i'm like have you worked out have you eaten good food no i had maccas last night no i haven't yeah. worked out today no yeah. shit bro yeah. no yeah. shit no shit you feel like yeah, of shit. course this Dude, recipe go and do these things like it's just like tried and tested that like these things work and i think that a lot of people get in their own head and like oh, i feel crap yeah. bro, you're not doing anything to help yourself you're not doing anything to help your brain so yeah. uh once you start doing those things getting those variables correct bang you're good you're fine you'll be sweet and every any time that i start to feel you know a little bit down i'm like hold on, I'm not doing this, you know, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. Yeah. Um, and then pff, I'm fine, I'm sweet. Yeah, so that's why routine is probably important for you as well. Because yeah. I think you, I've heard you speak about routine, like how important it is for you, mm-hmm. like getting up certain times, yeah, exercising. Yeah, something I praise, 5 a.m. wake up. Yeah, 5 a.m. 5 a.m. club. Oh, mate, you're in that. It's off chops. Yeah. Uh, it's literally, it changed my life, clear head. I don't I don't even need caffeine like that's most amazing. of the time. So that's so when I did have a coffee, not going to lie, because I had to shout out to one of the new coffee coffee places in where I'm living. So uh, I had to go there. I had to find the local, Love but that. Um, support local. But it's you once you start to get your sleep right, you're sweet, you're fine, you can get up 5 a.m., you're good to go. Now, can you take me back to like when the Prime Train business started yep. and the trigger for or the light bulb moment where you wanted to get into this space mm-hmm. and I guess just defining a little bit about what it is for the mm-hmm. listener that might not be accustomed to it? So I think that it all, uh, I'll go back to the start of it and I think that it started during COVID, which a lot of businesses did because you kind of get that kick up the bum. You're like, I wasn't getting any Centrelink payments. I wasn't getting like anything. I'm like, bro, I have no money, like like 20 bucks. Like, yeah. I need to figure out a way to make money. So I started off making a body weight, eight week body weight program. Um, and it was originally called pandemic training. So it was obviously during the pandemic, we didn't have access to gyms. So I ended up selling like 5,000 copies of this, just like eight week body weight plan. Wow. Yeah. Just like bang. It was like $19. So like okay. cheap as chips, but like sold it up. <laughs> yeah. It adds up. Yeah. It adds up. And we, we sold a heap of it and that was mainly Queensland based. And that was all online. And then later on we started to, or, or once the pandemic kind of finished, I was like, I liked the initials PT. So I kept with that. And then I ended up moving on to uh, Prime Train. So we started wow. with that and that would have been a year ago. Was that the name of the business? Because that's become the name of you. Yeah. 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 Which so is interesting. The, yeah. So we yeah registered as a company and everything, Prime Train Proprietary Limited. And um, that was a year ago, pretty much probably maybe 14 months ago now. Mm started doing TikToks and everything and posting on Instagram. And I was very fortunate that things started to, you know, I started to figure out the algorithm. I started to figure out what was happening with how to get a viral video. Um, Mm. And for me, that was a massive thing and researching and all that. Like a lot of people will think, oh, you're really lucky, you know. Nah, bro, it's not luck. Like there's a lot of trial and error and testing that went into this to figure it out. And also a lot of work behind the scenes that I do, like to make myself look good because at the end of the day, like, if you're going to take your shirt off on social media, you want to make yeah. sure that you can attract people's attention. Correct. With it. And so, you're the product of the prime train exactly. business, right? So who's going to buy, who, like people aren't going to buy my program if I'm not athletic. Yeah, so of course. Like, you know, if I'm going to be an athlete trainer, I have to practice what I preach. So, Absolutely. 
um, I guess that's where it started. And then we kind of moved through and we, we got a whole lot of athletes that were coaching uh, a lot of Brisbane Lions and Gold Coast players because that's where I was living. And then more and more interest started coming in. We got Todd Mitchell came on board and, and then we started linking up with a little bit of content and working with him. So I guess that's where it all started. And now we've got, you know, I think we've got over a thousand athletes now on a program. That's so pretty much you're creating programs for athletes, either working with them one on one or sending them out to them yep. and like keeping up the feedback. So it's mostly online at the online moment, but coaching. now that I've moved okay. down here, it's going to be a lot more one on one. Right. My pro athletes are more one on one based. Um, than what my kind of just normal, um, I guess, younger athletes might be. But if there's a younger athlete that I feel like needs a bit more work, then I'll do some one-on-one stuff with them. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that the opportunity is there for anyone to do that as well. Like I think there are a lot of people who are very scared to to start and put themselves out there. So um, I guess my advice would be don't be too scared and, yeah. and go and do it. So it was like the fitness training, was that stuff you always loved? Is that why you yeah. got into it as like that PT aspect? Yeah. Is that so something you just wanted to do? I started off as a, um, you know, as a personal trainer. So I finished school and then went and did my PT certifications and strength and conditioning and all that sort of stuff. Then I went to uni and did sports journalism and I was still wow. working as a PT, right? And I was doing sport journalism and I was like, this isn't my passion. Yeah. Finished my degree. Um, I'm still only 22, so I'm still pretty young, but finished my degree and everything. And, and the whole time during my degree, I was studying sports science. Like, oh, really? I was just, I was going to sports science classes and stuff. So I didn't but get- But you weren't even in that. Didn't co- even get, no. Oh. But I would just go to lectures and stuff and just, because they don't so check. So generally interested. So in I was it. generally interested. I'm like, but then I, it was probably, and I got to the end of my journalism course and I got the piece of paper. I'm like, sweet. Uh, so I can fall back on that if I ever need to. But I've got all my certifications to do- um, to do the training and then involved in prime training, we've got sports scientists. So we have three yeah. sports scientists involved that, do, that help me a lot, a lot out with the programming and stuff. Uh, my program is very sound, but it's also like we said before off air, it's more about the people around you and yeah, having right, that right. connection is so important. Yeah. It's powerful. Mm. To the bit. So when, we, when did the penny drop to like really go hard on the content? Cause obviously you're building the programs mm. and feeding them out to people, but when was like content, like front and center of, I think when it started, uh, I think when we started to hit our max of kind of like through Instagram and Facebook organic reach, yeah. and then it was like, cause TikTok's not really organic reach when you think about it because Mate, it's abnormal. Yeah. Cause it goes on the for you page and, and you can yeah. reach all these different audiences. And, and a lot of the, my favorite, um, I guess things is, is when I go into the, you know, to the Shopify and I see people from Denmark and Austria and United Kingdom and stuff That's buying the programs. Awesome. And I'm like, bro, this is insane. Global. You know, like this is what, I couldn't do that if I was just posting kind of normally on Instagram and Facebook. Mm. TikTok is a completely different game and you can reach, you know, thousands of people in different 100%. countries. Are you seeing this stuff before it happens? Like I'm big on manifestation and like, yep. so like, were you seeing global sort of interactions? Were you seeing the apparel? Were you seeing the TikTok views, YouTube yeah. views, all of that? Yeah. I think, um, one of my biggest advice to people is to dream big, be ambitious and, yeah. and have goals. Like I think one of people that I love to hang out with are people to me that have goals and yeah. have a five year goal. One of my first questions to ask someone is like, what's your five year goal? And if they say, Oh, I don't really have one. I'm like, I'm not really sure if that's the kind of people that I want to associate myself with. Cause I want people that are ambitious and, dr- and are driven. Yeah. And that's the people I like to surround myself with. Cause I'm competitive and I like to not necessarily compete with like, that's why I moved in with the nine to five boys yeah, because it lifts you up. We, it, we're all in that same kind of like we, we all push each other and, and it's a really healthy competition that, that we, I think we all thrive on. Absolutely. Just on that. What's the plan with those boys? Like, is it just a, like a content house, just a vibe and buzz yeah. off each other? I mean, we're, you guys na- have a natural chemistry and friendship. Yeah, th- that's the thing. Like I think we first came down, similar to this we did a podcast and we got along so well and um, <laughs> funny place, it was man. oh it was hilarious man like me and Lou actually met for the first time in Sydney um, I won't go into too much depth yeah, about I, that I will just want you to know that I know <laughs> <laughs> and let's just say mate that you guys will be it's, friends legend, for a it's long, pretty it's, legendary yeah, though what a great way to like, meet that is the he- most funniest yeah. way to meet. <laughs> like goes down in history for us. Like, do you know I actually saw a message and shout out Louis Phillips, nine to five fitness. Yeah. As I've called you, you are now the cum tree guy. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. That, bo- that video on TikTok has gone, gone viral. viral. If you haven't seen it, go see it. And anyone in Melbourne can relate to it. Oh. Um, but I said, oh mate, give me some dirt on Prime. And that was, he sent me four voice memos and that was in the first one. No. And I just stopped at the first one. I said, mate, I can't listen to last week because I can't get better than that first one. I don't know. We've only been in the house for two days. So it's, oh, it's been awesome. a bit of 
Holly. Uh, what's it called? Honeymoon stage. Honeymoon stage, yeah. <laughs> Honeymoon we'll stage. We'll wait for three months. Yeah. Boys might be <laughs> Turn on at each other. other's throats. <laughs> um, oh. But no, nah, me and Louis as well, we're going to open up a little business venture together as well. So oh, I think that, uh, and like I said, like we've got the, that drive and vision of what's going to happen and, and where there's gaps in the market and where we can start to hit. Super exciting. Now, one of the things I think you've done incredibly well, because I think there's a lot of great PT, PTs out there and potentially doing similar stuff to you. Mm. But one thing you've done, I think, superior is your branding mm. and how you brand yourself and market yourself. So much so, like, I don't even know if you're doing it, but you could be a consultant in that space. Have you ever thought of that? I, I don't have, know if it's yeah. a value, but like, I th- because of how well you've done it yourself. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a plan to, to, to start, I guess kind of business coaching yeah. um, close in the future. So that's definitely something or business coaching or marketing coaching kind of in the future to help people right. um, figure out what content to post. Like even just like the mullet, the pink, do you know what I mean? I don't know. And some of this, like it yeah. might've fallen in your lap, might've been really natural, yeah. but also something tells me like you're quite methodical and strategic about mm. it. So you can tell me, talk me through like a bit of your perspective around how you wanted to brand yourself mm. and I guess the building and the branding of Prime Train as yeah. well. Cause it's a bit of a legend. Like some people don't know you also do programs and yeah, that's the foundation of what you do. People just yeah. see the, you know, the footy figure that's kicking goals for Noosa Tigers from the boundary <laughs> and shit. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I think that like, um, I think I've always been a bit of an attention seeker. Yeah. So I think yeah, guilty that, as charged. Yeah, guilty. Too, like, yeah. and I don't know. It's good in what I do. I don't know. Some people, some people might rub people the wrong way, but um, I don't know. I, I've never really had a problem with it myself. So I guess that. The, the mullet and that sort of stuff, um, it's marketing at the end mm. of the day. Like uh, I wear it because I enjoy it. Like yeah. I, I, I like it, wear it like I'm wearing a wig. It's yeah. Real. <laughs> it's real. Um, and it's funny on a night out, I get people coming up like pulling on oh, it. They're like, is it real? Uh, like, bro, don't touch me. Man. Yeah, that's, that'd be my pet hate with it. <laughs> I know. Has that ever happened nah. on the footy field? Just yeah, I could imagine field, like yeah. that would be a go-to to oh, rev you footy up. Footy field's crazy. Yeah. Um, some of the abuse. Anyway, the, I think that, but I've always been a pretty – a uh, vibrant kind of person anyway. So whether it's my, my persona or what I wear, I like to wear things that kind of match what I feel like. So um, obviously, you know, I'm in the pink jumper at the moment and the pink hoodie. And I think that that comes with the brand. And I think it's as well, like the confidence to kind of go against the grain a little bit. Yeah. Like, cause that's what I've done with my content from the start um, and with my brand from the start. And I think with what people wear and stuff, I th- I, I'm, I want other people to be confident and feel you know, feel confident in what they wear. So if you want to wear a pearl necklace, like go wear a pearl necklace, bro. Like bro. that's what I do. I'm like, yeah, bro, who cares? Like yeah. if someone's going to give you a little bit of stick about it. Yeah. As long as you're happy. If you, if you feel comfortable, then why would you, you know, if you feel uncomfortable wearing it, then, then don't wear it. Correct, but, if, bro. but if it's something you want to do, bro, well, you always do go 100%. for it. For, for anyone that's wanting to get fit and wanting to get your programs or buy some of your cool apparel, where, where would they head? Uh, straight to the Prime Training website. You can literally just Google Prime Train or Prime Training. And Is that high up in the Google algorithm? It it'll be the first, first one. on the Google <laughs> algorithm. We got Jeez, a lot of five-star reviews. Baby. We out here, baby. Let's go. We out here. It's still actually put as the Noosa, the Noosa house. So I might have to change that, change it up. But I don't really want people knowing where I live here. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that. Nothing. Yeah, no. I'm Maybe Noosa is a different ball. Yeah, Noosa. Yeah. No you'll cares. get you'll get the young the young it's, guys living. That's why they'll be tuning in just to get grab that, that address. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, my address is <laughs> um, I, just to go on to for, for me because with your obviously um, statue now, you're obviously getting a lot of brands and people reaching mm-hmm. out and how you navigate your alignment with brands. I think I heard on the Nine to Five Fitness, you had like Doritos reach out and he's like, "That's just not a fit." Like, <laughs> it's like, bro, like that doesn't fit with my content at all. So yeah, I was correct. like, sorry, Doritos, like shout out. We love but you. I but I respect that though, because yeah. a lot of people would just be like, fuck, oh, there's cash there. Yeah. There's cash grab. It's just a packet of chips. Well, there was some, there was someone that I watched that did a, they were a Richmond supporter and they, or they were a Collingwood supporter and they did a Richmond like membership, um, plug, like put themselves on like the bridge. Oh no. I was, and they were like, I'll oh, do anything for a bag. I was like, that, unfortunately that's not me, but I'm also fortunate that I'm not looking for you don't money. Need to yeah, yeah. That. Like, it, you don't need to I'm not trying to bro. say like, you know, I'm not saying that I'm a freaking baller or anything, but like, no, no, no. But like, I'm comfortable with people buying my programs and my merch that I don't have to jump at something that I don't necessarily need to jump at in okay. terms of brand deals. Got you. So when you think about like, just go to go back to branding, speak to you of your business, and this is just for the listener out there. What, mm-hmm. what are some of the key items or the key sort of pieces around branding that you think everyone should be implementing mm-hmm. when they're building a brand, like mm-hmm. whether it be a podcast clothing? Yeah. I think that one of the, f- the first thing that I did was a really good logo. Right. Absolutely key. Like fucking absolutely key. You get a good logo with a really good coloring 
mm-hmm. that you know that you can make, make merch out of that you that if you've got plans in the future maybe if you want to make a gym or you want to make like a hair salon think about the colors of like the coloring so important as well like um you know a lot of people go if you go for red that kind of might, might be it might mean something if you go for blue it might mean something if you go for a green it might mean something so mm. it's kind of about you've got to be careful of the coloring but then just make sure that you're You've got a really cool logo. I, I love my logo. Yeah, it's just I'm, me, big, bro. I'm big on name and logo too. I can't yeah. get past that. I think that that's the most key thing. And and yeah, get something that like I went with Prime Training because I know that that relates to like good. You know, mm. the best. Yeah, Optimus Prime. You're you're, you're the best. Yeah, you're the best Autobot. I don't care what it is. Gotcha. Like so, when people think of Prime Training, they instantly in their head they're like, that's the best place. Right. I want to go there. Okay. So who would you be drawing inspiration from in the content space? Is it people in your field, or are you mm. just looking at like left field people that make content? And you're like, they're cool. You get their vibe. Yeah. I think a lot of people ask me that, and or do you not watch much? I don't really like. I've never really been a big watcher of other people's content. That's cool though. I like is, that because you're so you're probably focused on your yeah, own. Yeah. Like I just don't. I, I, I'm, I've got enough of a creative edge, I think, to just kind of do it by myself. Mm. So I've always been lucky with, with that sort of thing. But in saying that, you know, there's a lot of other people that do similar things to me. But I've figured that out after I've after I've done my own stuff. And people are like, I started doing these like one v one marking challenges, which are like so sick. In like I did them in Adelaide and around Queensland, I'm going to do one here. And then like the winner gets 500 bucks and yeah. it's like so cool. Can we talk about that actually? Because yeah. like what's it? Because isn't, isn't there also like a 1v1 kicking comp as yeah, well? Yeah, so you do like 1v1 goal kicking comp and then you do a 1v1 marking comp and the marking comps are so sick. Do you know how fucking big this is? This is why I reference like when I was doing that theatre at the start, it's because of, of shit like this yeah. because you just go location this time yep. and then a flock of like and kids like, and people, yeah. boys and girls. to 500 people come yeah. every time. And I'm and like, like, what the fuck? No yeah. one in Australia is doing that across yeah. any code. And that's yeah. what's remarkable. Remarkable to me. That's when I was like, oh, it's a real fucking community and like a cult. Mm, it, bro, it is culty, bro. It's culty. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, guys, it's a bit weird. Like, and like, there are people fucking <laughs> a little mullet slide down. I, come, I, I put like little designs on the side of my hair sometimes and people <laughs> rock up out, oh, I got the prime cut. I'm like, bro, just, uh, that's so, that's so right. bro. But, <laughs> I just fucking go like, to bro, school, that's kid. That's sweet, but like your school's going to get angry at you, man. But what was the, so what was the motive to start doing that? When did you think you had enough leverage to like, oh, this is going to, this is going to grow and this is going to uh, get people? I didn't even, th- it's no second thoughts. I was like, let's do it. If two people rock up, if fi- 500 people rock up, who cares? Like, let's right. just do it because I think that's as well something that holds people back. They're like, oh, what if two people rock up? It's right. Like, bro. Oh, who gives a fuck? That, but, but that's a stepping stone, right? Mm. Um, the bigger the setback, the bigger the comeback. So I'm like, let's just go, let's do it. Um, and yeah, started posting these one v ones. We've got one in Adelaide, which was yeah, I haven't I haven't edited it yet. That's where you just were. Yeah, just Melbourne were. Yeah, you know, like a week ago. Yeah. yeah, and it's absolutely it's off its oh, head. So sick. We had like heart, some of the Port Adelaide boys there and stuff, which was sick. So wow. they came along to it, um, and the winner won 500 bucks. And this guy took like the sickest one hand to grab. Oh, that's win. amazing, it's dude. Off shop. So I can't wait to get that content. That must be pretty like fulfilling for you those experiences mm. like kind of just like do you pinch yourself when you're doing that because like you said at the end of the day you are a local footy player yeah literally and this is like yeah. and I, that's why I put in some regards I put you above some AFL players because I'm like the cults <laughs> yeah like I think like I said before it's, it's that accessibility and and you know, no other AFL players are going out and doing like a 1v1 challenge because and like meeting you know all these people kind of thing because you know they're just not as accessible and uh, whether that's the club or that's them I, I don't know but I guess that that gives me an opportunity to do what yeah, I do, right? So, There's a back gap um, so I definitely jumped at it, and um, a lot of people think that I'm a better footy player than I actually am. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe because <laughs> I post all my highlights. Yeah, well, this is going to tie into the game day vlogs, <laughs> which yeah, I want to yeah. go into. Everyone's post, everyone's Mate, like, I, the only thing I know of you is like taking a hanger or kicking an absolute beast from <laughs> yeah, the boundary. No, everyone so, sees that. They're like two <laughs> touches for the game and I'm kicking, like, I'm kicking <laughs> really? one, one goal from the boundary, and everyone's like, "Bro, this guy's a gun. He should play AFL." I'm like, "Bro, I've had five touches." <laughs> <laughs> You should do a bloopers one just to like level it out. Yeah, I have a bloopers video. But people are hanging off those game day vlogs, yeah. man. Like they, but they love them. Like I, I enjoyed watching yeah. them. Cause I'm like, fuck, who's he got this week? Like, and he's playing for Noosa Tigers. I'm I like, know. hold on a second, it's Jake. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I? This, why am I attached like, to Noosa Tigers all of a sudden? <laughs> we were the people's champ, bro. We were yeah, the people's yeah. champ. Everyone's like, go Noosa Tigers. He's people tune in, man. It's crazy. We got most of the YouTube vlogs get around 50k views. So, right, um, that's, that's so cool, bro. That's that's as well. Like people forget that that's money as well. Like you know you get paid from youtube so so that's as well an income source for me yeah um but i actually don't make any money off that because i pay my videographer right to video it and then edit it so i actually make zero dollars okay. off it but um 
but that pays for the videographer and it pays for the content. So, awesome. um, and I think that's something to be really conscious of as a content creator, to be able to, um, not get so focused on what you're like, not go for like money over quality kind mm. of thing. So like pretty much all the money that I earn from content, I'll invest back in to the content. Okay. Gotcha. And that's what's something that Mr. Beast does. I don't know if you see yeah, his dude, stuff. He, yeah. He so, talks about that actually a lot. Yeah. He's like, I actually key. don't have any cash. He has none because he, yeah. he'll get a million dollars from a YouTube video. And then his next YouTube video is like, so, win a million dollars for yeah, doing yeah. this. Correct. And then I'll earn him another 1.2 yeah. million and he just keeps going up and up and up. Do you know how smart he is, bro? Have yeah. you seen the Mr. Beast burger, what he's done? Yeah, I did. Like anyone can make the burger. Yeah. And so you can buy it from any shop if they want to follow the recipe. <gasps> it's insane. Like, so they could be making their own burgers, but they'll, like, well, they'll add it in or they could be selling fish and chips, but they can add it Dude, in. That's just so he's smart. so smart. And he, yeah. his content is, it's incredible. It's yeah. Really, it's, really it's good. I, I, don't think anyone can beat it. No. It's so far fetched and so hard to do and yeah. so complicated and oh. dangerous and I was watching one where it was like a guy has to spend a hundred days in an abandoned house. Oh, they're in the circle? In the circle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he wins five hundred K. Yeah. It's no fa- he's got a family, bro. Yeah, he left his family. Left he said goodbye to like an eight year old. Comes home with five hundred K sorry to ruin the video, everybody. <laughs> but like- comes home with the cash, comes home with the bag and mum and little daughters are like, damn. I think <laughs> for food as well. Like they didn't give him, they gave him yeah. like food, but like it was plants and like you had to grow shit yeah. and, like fucking and they, be self-sufficient. They gave him like <laughs> baked beans and like there wasn't enough calories yeah. for him to survive. He had to be self-sufficient. So he had like to grow fucking, stuff. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. What a gun, bro. Yeah, I love that. Shout yeah. out Mr. Beast, bro. soul searching. Would you do that? Yeah, I days? reckon. Well, he did one where he was laid in a coffin, like a glass coffin under oh, underground I for like, do that. yeah, I'd get claustrophobic. No, I couldn't do that. Not Th- for me. That, that for me. And I was like, he's doing this to himself by choice. Yeah, that's like my biggest, that's one of my biggest fears. Mine's phobia. Tight too. Yeah. Tight, tight spots. Yeah, agreed. Not for me. I, I just, uh, back to the footy point, I yep. had assumed you probably wanted to go to the AFL um, yeah. as a kid. Yeah, 100%. Were you, were you close? Were, uh, were you in and around? Because, I mean, you yeah. just downplayed your footy skills, but nah. I, I got I, I heard through the grapevine that you weren't too far off. Yeah, no, nah, I was um, I, I was defi- definitely was always, it, it's every kid's goal, I think, growing up. And I think that if any kid says that it wasn't, I think they're lying because I think that everyone grows up and they want to be, uh, for me, it was like James Heard and Ben Cousins growing up was was the people that I wanted to be and, and who I idolized. Chris Judd, you know, those kind of guys. Yeah. I was like, oh, I can't wait to be them, just play on the MCG and just then- Breaking lines. Just kicking breaking lines, goals. kicking goals from 50, dominating. Yeah. Um, and then I think that, um, I don't know, you-, you you grow, I grew up in a really small country town, 2,000 people. This is in WA. This is in Western Australia. And that's when I grew up kind of year one to seven, pretty much. Right. And then I moved to Queensland kind of year seven to eight. And then I moved to uh, a school in Western Australia, went to boarding school at, at the start of year eight or year nine. And and that was a that was a reality check for me because I've grown up my whole life being the superstar, you know, like yeah. I'm in a small country town. I'm in Queensland where you don't play that much footy and everyone's like, this bloke's a gun, you know, he's, yeah. a, he's a jet. And I think that that's probably one of the first times in my life that I was like, don't get ahead of yourself yeah. because the world's so much bigger than you stuff. think, right? Yeah. So then I went to boarding school and and um, I think the footy footy in WA is pretty massive. So in, in a city and that was when I kind of got to be a reality check and, and was like, I don't think this is going to be a career. So I, so I worked really hard during school, still played a lot of footy and and got really close um, at the end of, you know, the end of year 12 and, and my gap year. And But at the end of the day, mate, I, I actually um, – I found, you know, footy's always been my passion, right? Yeah. And I've still found a way to make a living off it and that's not playing that's at a professional f- level. fucking amazing. So like, and it, it's when really it, hard to do that. It's really difficult. And I think that anyone that has a, the passion for footy, you can make a living out of it, whether it's training AFL players, whether it's, you know, posting your own content. If it's local footy, you can still do that. Like, don't mm. be, just because you made it, like there's so many other avenues. Like I go up and pl- I go up next week to play in the NTFL and like fly in and out of that in Darwin. And like, that's such a fun opportunity to do. And you can't do that if you play AFL, like you, you, you have so many avenues, avenues to go through with that. Do you reckon, I mean, this, I don't think this will sound too crazy to me and you, maybe to some of the listeners, but yep. do you reckon the way you've positioned yourself and marketed yourself in the local footy space that some kids might actually like it's cool to play local footy. It's yeah. cool to want to be prime oh, trained now. Like, like it, if you fall short, it's yeah. still fucking pretty cool. Yeah, I think. Do you know what I mean? It was yeah. like make or break. It's like it's like yeah, it's not the end of the world if you don't get picked. Correct, right? Which if, and it's and, fucking hard to get picked it's up. It's fucking difficult, bro. Like there's a lot of people out there that don't get picked, and they drop their bundle and um, and they're or they get picked up. I got a lot of friends that got picked up and then spend one year in the system and then they get delisted, right? Which is almost worse. And it's like you can still you can still you know there's still a lot of money in country footy. There's yeah. still a lot of there's still a lot of coin 
um, playing around footy. If money's your passion, um, but you're bringing pretty, eyes to games now as well. Yeah, but if yeah, right, <laughs> like you know, you can you can get a lot of people to come to games, and, and you can still be a little bit of a. Um, you know, there's still an opportunity there to, to have footy as your passion. Right. So just, just to go back on that AFL story. So did you kind of know you weren't going to make it? So, or did you actually have an expectation and then it was like, oh, you didn't, you fell short and you had a bit of a setback? I think that, um, yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, it, it was a reality check for me going into boarding school and it was probably like year 11 and 12, I worked really hard on my on my grades because I knew that I needed something to fall back on. I was, you know, I was a talented, talented footballer, but I wasn't. I wasn't a gun footballer, you know, I was, you know, I had, I had a little bit, but I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't absolutely dominating games and then had one year in the waffle Colts where I played some really good footy and consistent footy, but, um, and I, you know, I spoke to a few clubs and everything, but nothing, nothing happened with it. Yeah. But I don't know. They're, they're, you know, they, they're always very honest with you, you know, that you need to work on this, you need to work on that. For me, it was always, um, it was a bit of an outside player. So like, you know, you, you're good on the outside, but you need to get more contestable. I'm like, bro, I'm playing on the wing and half back. So I'm like, not really. <laughs> what, what, like, what do you want me to do, bro? Like, <laughs> it's got to hold my it. space, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, it's literally my role to play outside player. Yeah. They're like, you gotta get, you gotta get more inside ball. I'm like, coach, talk to my coach, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, one of the thing, one of the things I spoke to Louis about, and this is, um, is how positive you are as well. So confidence and positivity were just naturally the things that he, he spoke about. Yeah. And before I go into some of the, the fun stuff that we did get into, <laughs> okay. I just want to, because I, I reckon a lot of people who listen, some people are not always the most positive people and right. we all have our times and so mm. forth. But for you, what sort of, if you were to give a formula to someone who's struggling with positivity, wants mm. to be an up and about positive kind of bloke or yep. girl, what would be some sort of pointers you could give them knowing what works for you? Uh, I think that one of the biggest things that I say is uh, if you hang around with nine positive people, you'll be the 10th. Mm. So I think that, or f- like maybe four, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter about the number, but hanging around with people that are positive and upbeat and fun to be around, you're going to be positive, fun and upbeat to be around yeah. because you're going to match that energy. You're going to match that vibe with them. Like I think that a lot of people surround themselves with people that might not align with their goals or might not align with what, what they actually want in life. And they're, they're sitting around a table at night or, you know, having a few beers with them and they're like, like, what am I doing? Why am I here? But they, people aren't that self-aware. Sometimes they kind of just go with the flow and they don't want to change the path they're on. And five years goes by. Yeah, five like, years goes by. I'm like, fuck, bro, I'm 25, I'm 26, I'm 27. Yeah. You know, I've missed like done the more. funnest years of my lives, of my life. And I haven't been hanging around the people, you know, they're still, they still haven't done anything mm. kind of thing. I still haven't done anything. It's like, it's not where I want to be. So I think that being really self-aware is important. Um, but yeah, hang around with positive people and make, and find that good group, find that vibe with people and, and you'll be sweet. But like I said as well before, like writing down your affirmations, writing down your yeah. goals. I think that's really awesome mm. that you do that actually, yeah. man. That's it's, really it's cool. At I, 22 years old, yeah, it's that's really that special. I, just, I swear by writing down my goals every day. I've got a financial goal, a personal goal, and then like a, a fitness goal as well. Do you know what's so. funny though? A lot of people probably know that that's going to help them, but not everyone does it. Too lazy. Yeah, don't want to do it. Yeah, it's not that hard. Just have it next to your bed. And I, and I sometimes I put night. myself in that category too, mm. but that's why that's why I think it's really admirable at 22 mm. that you're doing that Thank and con- consistently more yeah. so because yeah. it's easy to do with the odd day or when you're feeling down. Yeah, like Matthew McConaughey said, he's like everyone journals when they're down. Yeah, it's like why don't, why <laughs> don't you write when you're up so like, you know what works? It's consistency, <laughs> yeah. right? Though because like a lot of people change things when they're really positive and yeah. change things when they're really negative. Like yeah. just if you get a bit of a routine sorted, you can be consistent with it. So yeah, I think I think that. That's one of the biggest keys. Do you know what a, a word on the street is about you as well? Oh, no. This, Unbelievable I, on the dating game and chat. The old Brian train. <laughs> Unbelievable. Apparently, well, it's just a natural skill. Good sport. Born, you born have. with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he nah, just, I wouldn't I mean, say. I wouldn't say that. Nah, it's. Um, I, I've never. You know, I, I don't put like the opposite sex in a different category. Like, they're. They'd, I just see them the same as. That's probably the first start of why you're good at it's it. It's just, it's just, just to, like talking to anyone though, because I think a lot of people get a little bit nervous when they yeah. talk to a girl. I'm like, uh, like one of the first things I go to say to a girl is like, it's okay, I'm not trying to get with you. Like I'm just trying to have a conversation. Yeah, and they're instantly just like, yeah, comfortable. They're Do you fine. think that's a really sort of a, a sticking point? Is that everyone thinks you need a pick up game? Yeah. Like, like that's the motive. Like they're think, they're they're a different species. Yeah, to like us. I think that the biggest key is just to make them feel comfortable because a lot yeah. of, you know, especially out, like I could imagine being a girl, like especially a good looking one, like they would just get hit on Man, so imagine much. the DMs of some oh, girls. Bro. I feel sorry for them. It, like I, I feel know, sorry for the, like, I feel I sorry know for you beautiful ladies like, out there. People don't even understand. Like I get a lot of DMs like, 
how can I work on my jumping or how can I work, you know. <laughs> That like that's okay. Imagine getting like, hey, 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 hey. Sorry, did you see my last message? (laughs) Fire react, fire react. Bro, if you're gonna if you're gonna enter the DS with a fire react or a love heart, good luck. Just go because you're the same as every other guy. Like, say something a little bit witty or like or something like, how many replies did you get off this or something? Something that entices a conversation because then you can get going with it. Because why I wanted to bring that up and it wasn't to, to clout you out or anything. It was actually <laughs> to kind of give some advice for people because I feel like there's a lot that we can learn here. I say mm. we. <laughs> but no. Are you all right? No, I'm, a fanta- right? I'm actually fantastic. Come but mate. anyway. I've heard you. You're right? <laughs> no, you're but right? just in regards for some people that like are intimidated or struggle mm. with communication. Yeah. I think one of the things you, you might have even answered there was just being genuine. Yeah. But for, for those that like to next night out and they go out and they see yeah. a girl they like and like, fuck it, why not? Yeah. What what would be some sort of oh, you know, well, the prime train to, tips? It, well, it comes back to confidence, doesn't it? Like it, the, the, you know, the instance that you put someone above you, you, you've already lost the game, right? So like, if you're like, oh, she's so good looking, she's too hot for me. Like you've already lost because you go in there like shriveled up. You're like, mm. you, you're a shell of you. If you, you know, if you go in there, you know, genuine and, and confident, then it's a lot more, it's a lot more attractive, I think, to, to, to women than just going in there a little bit. Absolutely. A little man. bit scared. Like, and just like chill out. Like the instant that you put someone on a pedal, pedestal higher than you, it's the same with a lot of people that I meet. Like when I, I'm fortunate enough to, you know, meet, like you said before, like Neil and Cripper and Titch and like, I just treat them the same as everyone else. They're just mm. a guy. And, and they respect they that. Love they that. love that. They want to be treated like that. You would know better than anyone. Yeah. It's just oh, like, well, half the people I'm around and for what they do, I think I'm around for normality. Yeah, exactly right. Because I'm the clown and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, oh, this is what You can do whatever you want as well yeah. in public. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. So it. they can watch There's me There's no do cameras it. around. They're going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't be drowned. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Film me, boys. Film yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, literally. I went to the Collingwood president at um, the Copeland. Yeah, I saw you went to the Copeland. Yeah, yeah. the Collingwood Collingwood president, oh, I think, uh, came over and said hello to Geordie and stuff, and came over to me and said, "I have Geordie's personal physio, man. Nice to meet you. Like, tap you on the back. Good man. Just like random See, shit like that, just throwing dimes, and the yeah. like, guys like looking at me like, oh, what? personal physio? When did he get one of those? <laughs> like, There's connections right? as well, right? Yeah. Because um, you know that, and the instant that you talk, um, remember that the instant you talk to one person, could be a girl or a guy, mm. they have ten friends that they'll tell, and if you're genuine and nice to that person. That's 11 people that like you now. Yeah. Right? Because you've talked to one person, they've talked to 10. Beautiful. So I think that that's such a key thing. Like, if you're, you know, if I'm mean to you, that's 20 around. people, right? Maybe 100 that think mm. that I'm a wanker. Yeah. So you got to be really careful with, um, you know, just be kind to everyone. I think yeah. that that's the biggest advice that I could give to anyone because then, you know, you're just on everyone's good side. Courtesy costs you nothing, man. That's beautifully said. <laughs> Can't disagree with that. Now that's beautiful. With, yeah. With, uh, with the Prime Train business, because I know you're a visionary and you look down, what, do you have an end goal in mind? Do you have a sort of a, a place you want to see yourself get to that you're yeah. building towards? Yeah, I think that... I think that having my own gym has always probably been a goal for me and something that I, I would really like to have. Wow, the big PT big prime PT train prime on the front. Train. Yeah, Boom. just a big life-size <laughs> statue out the front. <laughs> Taking be, a hanger yeah, on someone. Yeah, 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 that would be awesome. No, gee, tickets on himself. Yeah, man, yeah I'll that, tell you that, that would be much. perfect. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, uh, you know, I've got plenty of goals that I've got set out and, you know, especially the na- next six months is to get all of my athletes, especially the pro athletes that are – that I'm going to be working with me one-on-one, get them hundred percent in Nick. And I think that the biggest, um, a lot of, a lot of people think that the, I guess the result of, of what they train, you know, if someone looks good or if their performance is good, like that's the sign of a good trainer. Right. Gotcha. But I completely disagree. I think that injury no injuries. That's the key, right? That comes mm-hmm. before, because performance, you can only change so much because there's, you know, there's talent. Mm-hmm. You know, people have talent. There's only, there's only so much that you can change in that kind of criteria. But if you can get an athlete healthy for a full season, that's the key. That's what, that's what separates a good trainer from a great trainer. Have you seen the, uh, you know, George St. Pierre, the famous yeah. UFC fighter? Have you yeah. seen, have you heard his trainer speak? No. I reckon you'd have a lot of alignment with yeah, him, really. bro. Because he trains like one of the greatest mixed martial artists, yep. fighters ever. And George St. Pierre is kind of famous for never getting injured. Yep. And he has this thing around like people doing like, he used pull-ups as an example. Mm. And he's like, you know, people might go in there and do like three sets of 10 and mm. they might fuck the last set. Like, <sighs> yeah, right. He goes, I'll go in, I'll go in there and just do a set of five. Just bang. bang. And then the next day I'll come in and do six. Mm. And he goes, the next day he goes, you'll do that one pull up for, you know, you do 25 yeah. bad reps or whatever. Once he goes, by the end of it, I would have done triple. Yeah. And I feel good. Right. 
and that was his concept. And yeah. I was like, it's a change my perspective on training. It's mm. like, oh, wow, that was really fucking savvy. Yeah, I think that's the key with – um, that's the difference because a lot of a lot of you've got strength and conditioning coaches and then you've got you know um, bodybuilding coaches, powerlifting coaches, but then you've got athlete coaches mm. and they're very very it's different. Super different. It's a completely different ball game. Like you know, I'm much more focused on mobility and movement and, and sport specific movement. Like you know, in AFL, you got to get down really low. You got to get into those really difficult positions um, that you might not have to get into in other sports such as netball. Correct. It's more on the more on the feet. You don't have to go yeah. down as much. Um, but yeah, it's it's more important to to make sure that you understand that and then also having someone that's actually played the game mm. is so beneficial yeah because you don't understand the, the movements yeah correct you don't understand. and it makes such a big difference oh. when you speak to someone that does doesn't it you if you if you haven't like if you haven't played the sport i don't think you should be coaching those athletes i agree yeah it's agree. just like you just don't understand what's required yep. for that sport whether it's you know a fitness or a you know whether it's fitness or movement you just don't understand i tend to actually agree with you on mm. that now we've got this final segment and it's something we've been building in the last few episodes and i hope people are enjoying this because this is the formula for six Success, people. Come on. And it's three traits that, you know, for, for me that I, tie, I attest to, like, people that have success. And I just want you to pick one of the three that you kind of tie in or relate to the most for All your right. sort of uh, success. So it's out of drive, resilience, and ambition. And what sort of, for you, has been a key pillar to get Tom Bolsh to prime train? Drive, resilience, or, or ambition. ambition. Yeah. And obviously, all three are factors, but just yeah. one that resonates the most. I think I think it has to be drive. Yeah. I think it has to be drive. Drive for me is like the biggest thing because it's a- ambition's huge as well. It's out of those two. I think mm. that drive and ambition, ambition's massive because you have to have those big goals and you have to be ambitious hundred percent, but there's no, there's no success without drive. You okay. can have ambition and, and no drive and you won't be successful. You can have drive and no ambition and probably be successful yeah. because if you're driven, at least you're still moving forward. Gotcha. If you've just got ambition, then you're, you've just got an idea, right? And you're yeah. lazy. I love that. That's the most methodical breakdown of that question we've had. So that was absolutely beautiful. What a note to finish on, Dude, mate. Bang. Prime train. <laughs> mate, we are out here, bro. We Welcome to Melbourne, baby. It's great you, to have you on the podcast, you, man. It's been a pleasure. You're gone. Appreciate you. Let's, Let's go. go. Bro, that's it, mother.